in the heat of the moment when I pulled up, when I was qualifying, I pulled up and I just couldn't see the line in my head. In my head then it was, hey, you go through all this, you do all this, and then you finish and you get DQ'd. And uh, I guess the question everybody wants to know is, uh, did you finish King of the Hammers? All right, well, the Hammers is over and we are sitting here with Cody Addington, car number 888-4400. Um, we still call this Lauren's old car, but it's not, it's your car. It's my car, yeah. We saw you down on the lake bed. You were uh, already dealing some ad with some adversity, um, blew the front dip before you even got to go out to qualifying. And uh, now we're back at your house at the shop. The car is behind us. And uh, I guess the question everybody wants to know is, uh, did you finish King of the Hammers? Not this year, we did not. Not this Wasn't year. Wasn't in the cards this year. So far we're about 50-50 on all the people we're talking to. Yeah, nice. Um, it's so a I, tough one. I stopped by and saw you. You shared the pit tent with Eric Miramon. Uh -huh. Great group of guys. Fun, fun tent to come by and hang out. At the same time, you guys are always prepping, busy working on the cars, getting stuff going. Fairly organized. Um, yeah. I believe that the team has a really good regimen. Um, yeah. But that, they, do, that doesn't always mean that the car holds together, does no. it? No. I mean, we're they kind of stick to their own program with their guys that know their car and i have my guys that know my car i mean eric has a lot of the logistics stuff with the chase truck and the you know some of the tooling i may not have out there so it it works out great for both both of us and he helps us in the in the pits as well so we throw guys at it he throws guys at it you know that way his guys can know his car in the pit they know my car you know because this thing's different to work on I mean, they're all so much and, and different the, you know the, even the time that i spent down there your guys were swarming on this thing the whole time you yeah know? so you, you you think you get all your prep work done up here you get down to the lake bed and uh so first off you're kind of pre-running a little bit and what happens well actually we were just so we got a new wrap so we were just going out and taking pictures i probably had a mile and a half on that front diff it was just rebuilt it, it appears that one of the uh, bearings failed from lack of lubrication or something and it's, unfortunately when it's, something like that fails it just catastrophic it, it took right? the whole thing apart so uh we were dealing with other people down on the lake bed that high pinion uh 543s for yep. 10 inch are like gold. can't get them yeah. they're not available no. right no gears available so you were forced to buy a whole nother diff from somebody right yeah luckily uh eric wicks another somewhat local guy had it out of um, reno right? yeah, yeah. Uh, tahoe yeah Tahoe, yeah. they had it someone uh, made a post and then you know it came up that he had one and he had a lot of interest in it but he was happy to sell it to me to someone that was going to go racing and needed it i was in racing. four or five other pits that people were looking for high pinion 543s yeah. they were calling the shop while i was gone so you know even though you i'm sure you had to pay a pretty penny you have to be feel lucky that he go very set you up with the dip so that's yeah. nice to have that norcal connection yeah now we have a spare i mean it's you know it's hard like you know we're a smaller team as far as budget and stuff so we don't have every spare part for this car i mean we have all the proprietary stuff axles and stuff like that but if we gotta hustle barter whatever we can do and you, you made know, it happen you yeah. got the diff and they got it in before qualifying. Yeah, we and had plenty of time. You went out there to qualify, and in the past, this car has always been a very fast qualifier. I've, uh, yeah, I've never not finished qualifying in 13 years. I've it, done and that so race. that's the other thing, you never finished qualifying. So tell us what happened in qualifying. So uh, I kind of, you know, I ran it a little bit, but in between we had um, some issues to where we couldn't get out and qualify or to run the practice yeah you're working on the car yeah working to get on the run. car instead yeah. and then they did that uh you know that shootout and the track had changed so much and i kind of looked at it and i i knew and in that my big head boulder had fallen right into the middle of the left line and everybody was high centering on i it. knew on my head like left line that's the one you did and then when i you know in the heat of the moment when i pulled up when i was qualifying i pulled up and i just couldn't see the line in my head i've done the right line plenty of times yeah I was doing the left line practicing, but I'm more comfortable with that. So I swerved right. Which is supposed to be the easier line, but you kind of have to do like an S turn up and through it and really uh, pinball your, your passenger tire off that big rock. And I think you missed it just by a little bit, right? Yeah, so I mean, that that's also one of the things with this car is the rear drive line's pretty exposed. So with seeing a lot of people get stuck on that left line, I go, okay, let's just go right. I went up, gave it a try, it bounced weird. 
I went up again and it just bounced back and just slammed, just broke the drive line. And right that's in half. the thing with having the rear end offset so much. It happened to be that boulder was on the right hand side yeah. and the drive line went right on. Yeah, I mean, there was nothing. I run Once pretty. Once the drive line snaps, I mean, there's nothing you can do at that point. I run pretty beefy stuff. And I mean, you, you can't put a 5,000 pound car on a boulder on, and expect yeah, it to not gonna win. not going to happen. You know? So, drive line takes you out of qualifying. Kind of a bummer, but it's an easy fix. But here's another thing. Um, you had to go pull another, you know, rabbit out of your hat because you didn't have a spare drive line. No, we did. We actually had two spares, but. Um, just to be safe. We wanted, we wanted another one to start with a fresh drive line. You know, one, one's more of a get off the trail spare. It still looks great, but you know, the slip's starting to wear out a yeah. little bit. So luckily our friend uh, owns driveline service and um, go You're up in Sacramento. Yeah. So you call up here, driveline service builds you a drive shaft. He that overnights day. the parts because we run a huge, we run like a massive, oh, the so biggest he had, slip. He had to overnight the parts to the shop to, his to shop. even build it. Yeah. So he overnights it. He builds it, yep. and then um, GBR, Gomez Brothers Racing, they had guys running back and forth. Yep. They got word that you need a drive shaft, and they sent their driver to Sacramento yeah. on the way down. Right? I, no, actually, we dropped all the stuff up at his house. Oh, okay. Some for Eric's car with the roll. We dropped oh, yeah, some, Eric got parts some too. panels off. And yeah, yeah. So uh, Charles Price, their semi-driver, we, we had two two or three different trips that people made. And Charles got down to the lake bed, what, two days later, right? You yeah. Got, you got, or a day and a half Did, later, you have your drive shaft, yeah. Eric has his parts, and that stuff was all strapped on the back yeah, of the semi. on the semi, because he has a little day sleeper, so I mean, it's a yeah. tight little cab. So, the, just another example of all these guys from up here coming together, getting Good. parts together, getting them down there, and yeah. so everybody can Good, race. solid group of fans that, you know, some of them stuck behind this year, so, you know, they were able to get all the stuff from Eric's house, and from Mike, and, so on Saturday morning, race day, your drive line's in, the front diff's yep. in, and where are you starting in the back of the pack? Supposedly it was 90 second is what my line was. And there was a good handful of people, maybe 15 or 20, that also didn't make qualifying because Dave, Dave did a killer yeah. job on, on making a fun qualifying course. Campbell's, one of the Campbell's, JP. Uh, Robbie Gordon. Yeah, Robbie Gordon, uh, Cade Rod and his new dragon. Yeah. Um, so you weren't like back there with the peons. There's a lot of fast guys, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, the first, the top 20, 20 or between one and 25, they're pretty fast guys kind of from there down, either you had a pretty bad qualifying or you're just not quite as fast. Yeah. But then there's some fast guys that are this they far just back. screwed up in qualifying. Yeah. yeah. And so you take off on race day and I heard a stat from you, which we can't completely back up, but it makes sense just seeing where you were during the day is that you started somewhere in the nineties, but the rumor is you were already up to about 20th at the end of the first lap. Yeah. That's what the, the guy that helps me with the media said, um, he it, was watching the computer and that was a wide open, fast desert yeah. lap. Great for an IFS car balanced yeah. like yours. So you were just ripping in the desert. Yeah, we were ripping and we were also being smart. You know, I wasn't, you can't tear the wheels off in the first, you know, Did 60s. you have any spectacular passes? I had a couple. People messaged me online and said you're a freaking animal, but I mean, <laughs> nothing that I felt too far out of, yeah. you know. Definitely some weird, because it was great. There was some passing in some spots, but then there was a single track section where I got stuck behind like four guys and I was so while. irritated. Yeah. I couldn't see anything, but. Well, so you pulled out of uh, main camp to start lap two and you came over BJ Baldwin Hill and Eric was on the side of the road, yep. right? Uh, did you stop for him or you just blew No, they didn't need me. They were, yeah, they were they outside the car. By, yeah. I, I think they were just getting back in. They were hooking the GPS back up. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we talked to him about that. So yeah. you took off, you got ahead of uh, Miramon and a bunch of people and started lap two. And this is where you started to have a few problems. So where's the, the first mistake that happened there? Well, we were charging through the rocks. I mean, this car works good in the rocks and you know, that's where my background was from rock crawling. So we, we did good. And, we got to a spot where uh, the the course came like almost back back to each other, and I just I just you know in the heat of the moment I missed Chocolate Thunder. So what we have to remember is you're a one seater car, you're driving the car, you're looking at the gauges, and you're looking at the GPS. And I just noticed you don't even have a steady handle or anything for zooming in or out. When you got a GPS that's bouncing, and you're trying to zoom in yeah. and out by your finger. It's not even possible. So the, the 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 in to chocolate thunder was on one side it looped around and then it and came out, back yeah. out but they came so close on the gps 
that if you took your eyes off of it and then brought yeah. your eyes back up, you would see that other course and go boop. Drive and then right I, over I there. mean, I knew I was like, it's just something doesn't feel right, but I just couldn't figure out. I even made another loop. I couldn't figure out what I did so, wrong and where it was wrong. So what happened is you missed that what half mile loop of going down yeah, Chocolate Thunder, easy. her problems, yeah. uh, all and decently back up. easy stuff. I mean, it's only a maybe during the race, ten minutes, not even that, yeah, right? Not even. Um, and to make you feel better, so one of our other guys we interviewed, <laughs> Brendan Thompson. He uh, knew that he missed Chocolate Thunder on the second lap, just like you, and he didn't want to admit it when we were doing the video. And then the the results came out, and he yeah. lost five more places and got a thirty second or a thirty minute penalty. Um, and this might have been something we we'll talk a little bit more about yeah. that. But basically, he told me he admitted after I called him that his GPS was screwing up, and he saw you make that <laughs> turn. And so he got behind you and followed you. Oh, God. Uh, and so I think what happened is uh, you guys were both confused, single-seater, yeah. GPSs, and made that mistake. Now, he did something different than you. He never went back. So tell us what you did. So we went through, and then uh, we got back to pit two and realized... Which there's two, three more rock trails between yeah, we, there. Yeah, we did Yeah, three rock trails, I think, and then uh, talked to the crew, and I just said, for me, you know, I want to do the whole race course. I... Now, hindsight, I probably should have just taken the penalty, but you never know what's going to happen. So I would you, hate to... So you did something different than other yeah, people. I went so back. The Robbie Gordons, the, you know, a couple years ago when Tom Ways missed Elvis, you know, uh, you actually got back on race course out of pit two yep. and, and entered where you could enter in the direction yep. of everybody direction, goes. Direction, same course. So you did two or three more rock trails before you got there, yeah. then did Chocolate Thunder, but that's where you had some problems, right? Yeah, so we started having some weird steering issues and couldn't really figure it out. We just, just put this new rack on there. Um, there's a little bit of compatibility issues from the different one, from the last one we had what in there. Was it, were they made by the same company? No, this is Power Steering Solutions. Our HAL one was definitely just worn out. So you had a HAL power rack and then you changed? I mean, to... dimensionally, they're exactly the same, but the way the rack adapter mounts is just enough different all the to give heads, us problem. The bulkheads on these cars are made for the specific rack yeah. that's in it, even so, though they try and make yeah. them be replaced. So that, that part was all good. It was yeah. just the way it mounts to the rack itself. So in hindsight, you found this out. So you basically got through Chocolate Thunder and your steering was just locking up yeah, so and you pulled locking, off the trail. Pulled off and the trail. It, at that point, you phoned a friend again, yep. right? And so you thought that it was the power steering pump, yep. right? I mean, obvious, because it was real just like glitchy and just, you know, like, like the, the pump was going out. Yeah, pressure. just like the pump yeah. was going out. I mean, and so you called into the pits, and if I'm not mistaken, they slapped a power steering pump on Eric's car. Yep. Because he was also having issues with the starter, but he made it back to camp, so yep. or to pit two. So he brings you. You wait for him. I wait for him. He, I have everything out, and I'm. Pretty you got much, the pump all the way out. Yep. And he's bringing you the pump. Pump um, and some fluid, because we don't. This car doesn't really have a lot of room for spares. We don't carry a yeah. pump. We don't carry no. fluids. I mean. We just so, we have a drive line and a tire and a jack. I mean, there's least, not much. You're at least two and a half hours off the pace now because not only have you looped back around a whole bunch of trails, yeah. but then you've been changing the, the pump, and yeah. so you're starting to get super frustrated. But I mean, at two and a half hours, you could still have a good finish in you this race. It still could have been a top 20, Absolutely. you know? Uh, and you want to keep going. So yeah, not, I don't like quitting, man. Yeah. I don't like quitting. So I'd... you get back in the, right before you get back in the car, what else did you have to do? Uh, we noticed that we freaking had a flat somehow. I don't know if we busted the wheel or what but it, you keep saying we you got a mouse in your sorry pocket? yeah or your team team yeah but you are out there yeah i'm yourself. driving yeah so you i know. had to change a tire um got that on got the pump in let it i mean it's the pump's right over the exhaust so it smoked oh, like hot. a lot you yeah. know we we ran some or i put some uh put some rags down to try and catch the fluid as the pump came oh, off when you and, changed it yeah. yeah so you gotta start it off and let it kind of burn so it doesn't yeah. start a fire yeah so you get going, you're driving a couple hundred yards, and what happens? Same thing. Same thing again. So it turns out, just like a lot of breakdowns, um, you know, I don't know if you know, but uh, JP Gomez lost a rear end. Well, they just happened to forget to put oil in it, right? Oh, gosh. I mean, it doesn't matter what team you are. You can make small mistakes. Yeah. And I, I don't think this one was a mistake you made. It's just learning about this new rack. Yeah. But, so what happened? So... I ended up just saying, uh, you know, by the time I missed the trail, like you said, I was, I was definitely frustrated. I would have liked to have fixed it, but I just said, okay, 
we're at a decent spot to turn around and get back to camp. Got back to camp, you know, kind of decompressed for a minute and started looking. And, and you're and, bummed. They're out yeah. still racing and you're in camp and you crack a beer and it's like, yep. I should be out there still. Yeah. And Eric wasn't even back, so all your no. friends are still out on the course. Yeah. So got to looking and the bolts that hold the rack adapter on had backed out. This rack, everything was the same, but this right here is threaded. Our old one wasn't. And you can't get a bolt that'll work in there with a nut. So unless you probably had it special made. So these two bolts meet in the middle right here and they started to back out and hit. Cause I mean, you could see it's, it's close to begin with. It all clears, but it's close. So that's what gave us kind of some static steering and uh, made us feel like the pump was going out. And they only have like three sixteenths on each side when they're tightened in for that rack to actuate side to side. Yep. As soon as it starts to back out, you got to actuate it and just catches it on the tube. Catching on the, it was hitting on the bulkhead. So it was a, it was a, a mechanical metal on metal stop. It wasn't the yeah. pump losing pressure. No. Wasn't yep. anything, right? And I mean, and, we have a pretty good program with you know Loctite and paint pins. When I was up here, when you guys were prepping, you had all the different Loctites, all the pens, yeah. and um, everybody was real. So it picky. was, it was tight. It's just once it started to work itself loose, it just that yeah. was it. And so at that point, you're literally took yourself out of the race yeah. uh, from something that could have taken three turns on a wrench and been yep, back. Unfortunately, I mean, it's just something you didn't see down in there. I not in a million years would have thought and, and that would have been the issue. And this happens to everybody. Yeah. You're not the only one that runs yeah. into these. And issues. like you said, if I had another, if I had a co-driver, you know, we probably yeah, would have been able the wheel to back and forth, put more eyes looking, on it, you yeah. know. Um, so uh, in hindsight, you know, you, you hope you wish you would have caught it, but you got a good car right now. Yeah, the car's we, good right now. You got NorCal coming up pretty soon, and uh, you know financially, you didn't blow everything up. No, we're uh, we're gonna do a quick quick prep, a transfer case change. We're not pulling the diffs right now because so we can't get gears anyway. King of the Hammers, you run an Atlas, yeah. so that you can have the low range for the hardcore rock trails. But at NorCal, it's short course racing. There's no reason to have low range. And you also don't need that 130 mile an hour gear, right? Yeah, and, and the, you run the a strength. turbo 400. Yeah, and the strength of the SCS is is pretty. So his car, your car, is different than other cars. The fact that you have it where you can easily swap the Atlas uh, yeah. for the SCS pretty easy. It all bolts into the same locations. We got to change one drive line length, so obviously we have one set of drive lines for each. And I, I looked over the table. You have a, a different transmission mount. You have the different transfer case, then you got a different set of uh, drive lines, but it's literally plug and play. Yeah. Like you were saying, you could change gears or a transfer case, you know, the night before a race. Yep. yep. Um, and that's the other thing about the SCS is you have different ratios, yep. right? Um, and it's and it's just strong. I mean, at this this horsepower and this level, I've broken a handful of atlases, yeah, and it, it gets expensive. And the difference with the atlas is it's got a shifter. You can put it in neutral. Yep. All these. Um, you know, synchros and stuff like full that. Full-time, four-wheel drive, spooled. So the SCS is just one shot. That's it. So it's either a, it's either a reduction box, you know, for, w there's a bunch of options. You can yeah. flip the gears. Yep. So look, I looked on the on the page there, you have three different gear sets. Uh -huh. So you can run everything from about 1.1 to 1.9. I mean, you could get it. There's infinite ratios. Those are just the gear sets that we got that kind of made sense for what and we want to do. And once you put that in, that's it. The only way to change the gear ratio is to pull it apart yep. and then change the gears. So this is the SCS we were talking about. Um, we changed this mount, Atlas mount, same bushing like that. This is one gear, one set ratio. Um, this bolts to the to the transmission. This goes in. You can change the gear ratios by either changing the gears or changing the locations of the gears for different underdriving or overdriving. So you're going to set this up for short course. You're going to go down to Prairie City and uh, maybe get your fix of going fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think with the one two nine, our setup red line. We're in the 90 to 100 mile an hour range, so we just get there faster. You know, that's don't need any more than that. Yeah, I mean, I've seen this car short coursing, and it straight up gets it. Short yeah, it's fun. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's. You know, I like it all, but you know, I, I like the competitiveness of being side by side, and you know. So, uh, going back to King of the Hammers, um, bummer you didn't finish. Awesome, the car's not ruined. You didn't wreck. You're not yeah. hurt. Uh, great group of guys down there, everybody yep. working on the car. Um, I think the one thing we learned and that's going to be talked about throughout this whole year is this whole penalty thing yeah. that's happening, right? So thir only 13 people 
that finished the race did not get penalized. Yeah, I mean, um, that's, that's rough. And, you know, I'm glad that now USAC's taken over this timing and scoring. And they, I mean, it took them, what, three weeks to get results? It took them three weeks, but I'll tell you what. Those spreadsheets and those charts, yeah. like anybody I mean, can look at it. It's so detailed. It needs to be that way because these guys, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot, lot of money on the line. On there's the a line. lot of money on the line. And in hindsight, you're going to have to think about it because Brendan didn't run Chop of Thunder, so yep. he wouldn't have had to go back. And I think he only got a 30 minute penalty. See, in my head then it was, hey, you go through all this, you do all this, and then you finish and you get DQ'd. Yeah. Yep. That would be even worse than and, me going back and, and doing the trail. And, you know, there has been gray area before on yes. what's a DQ penalty and what's yes. not. Yes. Um, and the, the fun thing is, is that, you know, it is fun for everybody to just get penalized and still be a contender. But when you start DQing people, you're going to have to yeah. really it's, angry It's people. not very fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in hindsight, that's just something to think about yeah, and, and definitely prep is. for for next year. Yeah. But I hope it doesn't come into play that teams are actually thinking, oh, we have a chance of hanging up the car. Let's skip that trail and yeah. take the penalty. Yeah, and that's... Like as soon as you start doing that... That's, that's where the gray area comes in because if you're intentionally missing trails, that 30 minutes, you, you know, that's nothing compared to what some... Say you got a big roadblock, you go around a trail, you say, okay, I'm going to skip this trail... You're DQ'd then. Yeah, you're saving all this time because there's a roadblock. So here's the thing. I'm going to ask you this. Do you think there's anybody who skipped a trail or a VCP or anything that did it on purpose? Oh, I'm sure. I I don't know. I mean, I'm sure. I think think there might have been a couple shortcuts, like taking a sand slide. Yeah, I mean, that's fine, you know. or Or a gravel around. But I have to believe you know, some faith in our fellow racers that nobody is, you know, purposefully missing whole trails, yes. you know. I mean, and I, I would like to think you, that you too. you didn't do it on purpose. No. Brendan didn't do it on purpose. I don't even know if Robbie Gordon did it on purpose on King's Veto. I think he just oh, the, yeah. saw the gravel road and went around yeah, and I mean, I, back, back I down. Would, that would be a 30-minute penalty that might be worth it. <laughs> right? You know? So, um, other than that... Uh, Thanks for letting us yeah, come up thank to the you house and, yeah. uh, and talk to you. And it's glad to have people like you in our backyard yeah. that are, you know, have fast cars. And Yeah, we like it. You know, this is why we still do it. So it's fun. I keep saying I'm going to quit and whatever because I don't, I don't have the finances to build a freaking $400,000 car. I just can't, you know. Yeah. Like, that's just not in the cards. So we've, we've done a lot to this car since we've got it. And it's, it's got most of the stuff all the other cars have besides portals. And I don't know if you need those. So. I don't think you do. Yeah. I mean, they're cool. But I don't think yeah. you need it. You got a smile on your face, yeah. and it's back in the garage, and it's not hurt. And you're no. getting it's ready clean. to go race again. It's clean so. after all the snow here. Thanks for letting thank us you. come by and talk to you. Yeah, and uh, have a good evening. Yeah, thank you. Here's a little trick I learned years ago. So I need these wrenches to get this drive line out of this mount. Take your zip tie, your duct tape. Okay, get, get your wrenches nice. <laughs> You know, duct tape's pretty strong. Absolutely. You would think, uh, you know, to get those out would be tough. So, you're in the race, you need to get the drive line. 